The English companies from the Royal Exchange come to Dublin, they've done well. They've done so well that they actually have two fire engines in their fire brigade here, uh, the biggest single fire brigade in Dublin at the time. By the 19th century, by the mid 19th century, there were 17 separate fire insurance fire brigades operating in the city, mostly one engine brigades. Uh, the first Irish company wasn't formed till 1771, and it was formed by people who were businessmen in Dublin, who were men of property, and who I suppose realised that their insurance premiums were flowing out of Ireland, London, and decided that they might set up an insurance company and benefit from the from the premiums of themselves and others. And this is a mark from the first Irish company, the Hibernian. Again, carries the policy number. Again, carries the crown. Quite a lot of this, as I say, a lot of early insurance companies tended to do that. Um, I suppose it gave it a semi-official look, but there was actually no no official reason for them to have that. Uh, the Hibernian used Irish imagery. It uses the Maid of Ireland Harp as its image. Other insurance companies began to come along. Other Irish companies began to come along. And uh, in the early 1820s, we had the, the National. Now, this mark is a tin mark, and again, it's not in great condition, but it can still be seen to be the National Insurance Mark, 1824. The image they used was the shamrock. That shamrock, generally speaking, would have been very brightly painted. It would have been dark green and a, a red background. So the imagery would have jumped off the wall at you. And later, as the company progressed, it, it toned down the imagery. And this would be late 19th, early 20th century mark. Um, a mark like this would sometimes be used on a house, but other times it would be used in insurance offices to show that they were an agency for that particular company. So again, we still have the harp, we have shamrocks, we still have a crown, still floating on that one there. Um, other companies, again, the Irish companies tended to play up on the Irishness. Uh, the British companies were using the same images as they used in their UK branches. Um, the West of England Children's Company, which were down in Tampa Bar, down in Crown Alley. Uh, the image on their fire mark was of King Alfred. So I'm not sure how many Dubliners of the period would have been awfully familiar with the image of King Alfred, but it was, as I say, it was the West of England mark, and they were a substantial company here in the day. This is another Irish company, uh, again founded in 1824, the Patriotic. And the Patriotic um, kind of went to town on the Irishness. They have the figure of Hibernia here. It's a very, a very stylized image and a very strange image for something that was done in 1824, 20 years before the Gordon Moor. Um, we have the figure of Hibernia shielding her children uh, with the horn of plenty and the image of the old Irish um, Houses of Parliament in the backgrounds. It's um, a strange mix of, of, of imagery that will appeal to a certain, a certain sector. Um, but would have no great kind of historical basis. And certainly when you think of the era that this was in use, it, it bore very, very little relationship to the reality of life in Ireland for most people. In later stages, the Sun Insurance Company would buy out the Patriotic. And at that point, the Sun made sure that it had its own imprint, regardless the, the Irishness had left the mark. It was still the Patriotic, it was still an Irish company, but it was only made by the sun. In fact, the, uh, the company also in fact the company also used uh, this mark um, again making sure that you know the Patriotic Assurance Company, guaranteed by the Sun, founded seventeen ten. The insurance companies like to emphasize the longevity because it shows that they are established companies that they have um, they have experience of what they do, and they're good by the very fact of their longevity. They're good at what they do. Where did they go? They went when Dublin was being redeveloped. They fell victim to they fell victim to collectors over the years. There was various phases where collecting fire marks was particularly popular. They fell victim to the destruction of Dublin, um, both the commercial destruction for redevelopment and the destruction caused by. The events of, of the 1916 rising in the Civil War, they would have accounted for a number of fire marks in that general area. They were stolen for their weight in lead in some cases. Some of the lead marks are quite uh, 
hefty. And enough of them would make it worth somebody's while to to steal them in the same house they'd steal lead flashing or whatever from, from wolves in those days. Uh, the most interesting one I've come across was in the collection of a friend who has um, a Hibernian map, which was found at the site in Wexford of one of the, the great 1798 battles. There's no reason for it to be there. Um, there's no town or, or immediate buildings that would uh, have justified the fire mark. And his feeling, and he, he may well be right, is that it would have been removed from premises in one of the larger towns in the area, probably by somebody who was eyed up to you know, the lead in it, because that particular mark had been bent over and certainly wasn't taken to be preserved. And it was probably taken with a view to being melted down to, to make musket balls. Um, it ended up in the remains of a ditch uh, in Wexford. And um, we'll never know that we'll never know the story. But there's, there's conjecture, but there's no way of knowing what the story of that particular mark was. As I say, 100 years ago, as late as 100 years ago, they put on a lot of fern marks around Dublin. In this day and age, there are still some that are in oddity but they are still there in the Dublin streetscape.